Hello and welcome to another Battle Games in Middle Earth video. This time, another painting tutorial. Over the next few months, I'll be working my way through the Breaking of the Fellowship box set, doing guides on how I paint these iconic characters. Uh, if you haven't managed to get a chance to buy this box set, it was on Made to Order uh, on the GW website a while back, so it might be tricky to get your hands on now, but I'm sure you could use any of the other uh, characters and versions of these characters that you can get still on the GW website or on eBay for a, yeah, a few quid, so not too bad. First, let's tackle the Prince of the Woodland Realm himself, Legolas. After a black undercoat, I kick things off with a base coat of the Death World Forest, perfectly named for the dying woodland realm of his home. I use this for the main elven outfit Legolas wears. It's kind of like a jumpsuit, isn't it? Anyway, the colour works, and just by the way, I love this model of Legolas. I, I think it's the only one from the range which shows him using the daggers. Awesome stuff, great to uh, make your version iconic. Then with my new favourite paint, Stegadon Scale Green, I do a nice thick layer on the elven cloak. I've painted numerous elf elven cloaks before, and I really like to layer over numerous different colours on it. I don't like them to be pure green or grey or blue, so I think this is a great base colour to start with, but we'll work on that a bit later. Now, on the front of Legolas's romper suit, he's got a little bib. I've done that in a darker green of Dark Angel's Green, or Caliban Green for the new GW paints. I'll put the, the link to all the paints I use and uh, the new current versions of those paints up in the uh, comments below, uh, sorry, in the description below. The tough thing about Legolas is the pure amount of green you'll need for variation, so we're putting it's running out of shades at this point, but we'll get there. With charred and granite, or storm vermin fur, I paint his lovely manly tights and thermal underwear. Um, you may be guessing from the way I'm describing him that I'm definitely more of a dwarf fan. With scorched brown, or rhinox hide, I started a little layer on his booties. For this stage, there is very little finesse, but we'll come to that elven precision later on with those highlights. Just slap it on! Also worth, worth noting, uh, perhaps paint the belt and straps now. I forget it and return to it later. Quivering with excitement about the next layer, I paint the bow on his back with a scorched brown as well, uh, ready to build it up to a light tan colour later. Now starting on his luscious legless locks with a layer of leather, that's Balor Brown in the new paints. The pale elven complexion begins with a layer of talarn flesh all over. Don't forget his delicate little pinkies. Apologies on the angles for some of these shots, by the way. Filming these appears to be more difficult for me. Now, it's been a while since I did one, but hopefully I'm back on, uh, back on track with them. Now, I mixed together the Stegadon green with some Femris grey to begin building up layers of highlights on the cloak. Notice that it's a greeny blue with a dusty pale blue grey mixed together, the idea being to start suggesting that shimmering chameleon like colour of the elven cloaks. With that I just paint the, uh, I just paint the cloak leaving only the recesses in the original colour. With Rikram Flesh Shade, I wash the skin to add a bit of depth. Don't worry, unlike my usual skin method, I will come back and highlight this. It's way too dark for Legolas' complexion at the moment. Then, using Athonian Camo Shade, I tackle Leggy's light green doublet. Back to that cloak now with some Thraka Green, but also the bib on the front. This is to add a bit of green to the blue-grey to the cloak, again to suggest that a multitude of different colours all in that Deathly Hallows type cloak. I use chain mail to paint the elven blades, and to be honest, I don't think I even bother going back to them. I find sometimes that highlighting metal just doesn't improve small metallic objects that much. Sometimes it can make them look a bit weird. Um, armour, yes, absolutely, sharpen the edges, but weapons, I don't know, it just feels like a bit of faffy waste of time. I think it's down to preference, but that's, I just think, one layer's fine, usually. Back to the tights to truly turn our Legolas into a Robin Hood style elf of the woods with a little highlight of Codex Grey. To be honest, I'm not sure it's essential, but it does add just a little more contrast with the greens, which is definitely worth doing. With sunburst yellow, I just put another layer on the hair. I leave a little around the forehead and I also go back again later to a bit of ponytail I miss dangling below the elven braids on the front. But we still need to lighten it to Legolas's bleach blonde, so we can finesse the highlights and add detail later. 
Back to that tricksy elven cloak now. A pure coat of Fenris grey brings it back to the greyish tint you get in the films, but also leaves plenty of that myriad of shading underneath. Once the yellow had dried, uh, I wasn't that happy with how bright it looked, so I went back with some Griffin Sepia wash just to add some shading again, just to give it a bit more depth. We'll keep highlighting it back later. Onto those braces on Leggy's wrists. We painted them scorch brown earlier, but they're a much lighter leather, so I used the snake bite leather again to highlight them. Yes, that means we're onto the stage of exciting brown highlights. Lots of tasty shades of leather to come. Number one painting tip, always have every shade of brown you can get. Nothing worse than having brown look the same across the model. Using a mix of Rotten Flesh and Space Wolves Grey, I do a very gentle highlight of the cloak again. Rotting Flesh is an old paint I've barely used. It's about as light as most bony colours, but it also has a lovely tint about it, just to suggest that's something else. Great for the ambiguous tones of this cloak. Now just a quick layer of Death Guard Green to bring the rest of the doublet back to scratch after that earlier wash of green. Green is the magic colour. So I just finish off that little skirt that he has with a mixture of Death Guard Green and Scorpion Green. Basically just a gentle highlight on the raised parts of the material. Be careful it's not too much of the scorpion green here, that would make it look a little bit too cartoony I reckon. We wouldn't want it to look too much like the Hobbit films now would we? I finally crack on with hair women across the world are envious of. Bleach bone for that, cause he's worth it. Then, back to those cheekbones, ooh, so dreamy. With Talon Flesh, just highlight them slightly after that wash earlier. And the same with the hands, picking out the details carefully. Worth leaving very little of the shading in the recesses. We don't want his hands to look too leathery and worn like dwarven mitts. Hmm, wonder what kind of moisturiser he uses. Must be tough to look after yourself in the wild. But he seems to Nivea run out. Yep, I went there. Soap brand jokes for the win. And back to that cloak again. I wanted to add another layer of colour to just keep that rainbow building up, and the Drooky Violet Purple Wash really adds something to it, I think. Also, note the painting handle returns. is very handle. Very handy. Back to Scorch Brown because I missed the belt. Deja vu, it's almost like I mentioned this earlier. And try and detail on the straps uh, holding that baby bib in place. With one of my faves, Retributor Armour, the gold paint, I just dab some on the belt buckle. It's actually a cool shape, so try and be careful to preserve that if you can. Take a bow, Graveyard Earth, or should that be a bow? <laughs> I highlight that with this delightfully versatile brown. Then with Desert Yellow, I begin to build it into this light yellowy wood that the bow he gets from Lothlorien looks like it's made of. Using another of my Kaleidoscope of Browns, I paint the quiver in bestial brown. I try and paint it around the detailing that's raised off the surface and leave a darkish gap uh, before that raised bit so there's a sort of bit of definition to help define it when we return to it later. With Dark Flesh, I paint the handles of the blades, giving them a nice warm red tone of wood. Again, another brown to contrast all the other shades. It's really awkward to paint. Maybe do this before painting the silver on so you don't make a mess like I have. A final, perhaps unnecessary highlight of the bow, and I, I don't even remember doing this, but I did it anyway, uh, using Rotten Flesh mixed with Desert Yellow. Uh, you can just bring out that tone to highlight the light wood from the films, just to add a bit of, uh, bit of lightness. Now with a tasty three-way, giggity. Mix of Rotten Flesh, Sunburst Yellow and Desert Yellow, I fletch the highlights of the arrows. Uh, with a yellowy mix. No idea what birds they make these feathers from, by the way, or indeed where Leggy gets his infinite supply of arrows from, but that is the colour they are in the movies, so needs must. Back with Retributor Armour again, I paint up the detailing on the quiver. Originally I'd intended to do this in a white or something along those lines, but he's a Prince of Mirkwood, so I thought that he'd have a fancy gold detailing, so I gave him that in the end. Now we're nearing the end, giving Legolas some bleached bone highlights for his hair. 
Try and be sparing, but paint them in lines following the contour of the hair, just to hint at the direction of the strands, even if the detail isn't actually there on every single Legolas model. I think it is on this one, but not, of them, not all of them do. Now, dotting the eyes and crossing the eyes. Well, that's what happens when I try painting eyes anyway. They always look a little wonky, but I went black first to shade in the pupils first in a revolutionary strategy, then later add whites to the eyes. As you can see, I've slowed these back down to just over double speed. Usually I'm speeding it up to eight times as fast at least. Um, I actually painted them, in, I think it was about four or five minutes, but um, I just want to show you how much time I actually spend uh, painting these eyes. So if you think this is about a 10 minute video, uh, I speed everything up to eight. So you're looking at you know a couple of hours painting the whole lot, but I'm taking, I'm taking a good five, five maybe more, 10 minutes on the final stage uh, of the of the of the process, you know, painting eyes is just it's just can be a really really long long process. So so you know this is taking up four or five minutes once you really factor in tidying up inevitable mistakes as well. So just worth noting that. Um, and uh, finally, we follow that up with an appropriately named final paint, Elf Flesh. Uh, this is a pure highlight for everything. It's worth noting uh, that this is kind of also a tidy up layer, um, just to make sure those eyes are less pronounced, so they don't look so cartoony, and also just to highlight the cheeks, the forehead, and the fingers. Um, again, it's it, Legolas is an elf, so we want to have them not too, uh, we want to have them not too leathery and sort of tanned looking. So he's nice and pale, and elf highlights make up for that. Um, I've also left this at just double speed rather than eight times as fast, so you can see the attention I've paid to them. And there you have it, the wussiest member of the Fellowship in all his glory. I based it up with a few leaves cut out using the Green Stuff World Leaf Cutter, uh, well worth grabbing hold of, they're really useful, um, and some static grass. I, I also th uh, I think I highlighted the bib in Snot Green, um, because I forgot about that earlier, so uh, but you, can, you can see what's happened there. But I hope you liked how I tackled this rare Legolas sculpt. I joke about him, but it's a great sculpt, and I hope you can use this formula for all the other versions of the models if you don't have this one. Hopefully more painting tutorials on the way, and don't forget, please comment, like, and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to have a say in what videos are next on the production line, please do pledge your support on Patreon. The link is below in the description, and I'll get to work straight away for you. Um, I know a couple of people have got some suggestions on Patreon already, and I'm getting to work on them, don't you worry. So thanks very much for watching again, and uh, uh, see you again soon.